like to welcome everybody to the Coaches in the Mouth Pods. Coach Jeff Williams, along with Coach Daryl Fimple and the Mouth Brent Bender. Hey, before we recap and get into a wild week of football, let's go ahead and thank our partnerships and our sponsors. Our number one sponsor, Lindsay and Associate, All American Steakhouse at in Springdale and the Pigs brand. Guys, let's get into it real quick. Daryl, we can recap a lot of things, but the bottom line at the end of the day is the thing that's going to take the top page is obviously Bentonville just rolling Fayetteville in a huge 7A West matchup. This thing's blown up. What did you see? What what do you think? What did you learn? Uh, well, I think that uh, somebody was watching our podcast because I think they got fired up. Got fired up a little bit there. Uh, you know, Bentonville, uh, like I said, uh, you know, the thing about Bentonville, I think the, you know, uh, the coach's kid, the quarterback, uh, I think Grant kind of settled down into his role, played really well, uh, you know, three, four touchdown passes in that game. Uh, they ran the ball extremely well. They were really physical. And when Bentonville yes, gets really physical, uh, you know, we've seen what they did to Bryant last year, uh, the kind of the same way in that token. Uh, and I didn't think Fayetteville's, you know, their offensive and defensive line really struggled in that game. Uh, so Bentonville definitely showed that they are, uh, they are, uh, they want to, they want to win the West. Uh, and, it, and the West is going to be fun to watch because I think you got Rogers. Oh yeah. You know, don't forget about our Mounties there. Mounties had another big, huge win. It kind of, uh, run some dream season there. <laughs> some part of the dream season. Uh, but yeah, the West uh, definitely shaked out, and Bentonville showed that they were, you know, definitely the one right now. And that should shake out this week, and we'll get into it. Let's kind of look down. I mean, Elkins a statement game. Farmington goes to Valonia. I mean, what a huge, huge game there. Greenbrier squeaks one out against against Alma. Junction City's back on track. Uh, your boys down at Prescott still rolling. But uh, what? Give me real quick thoughts about what you learned this past week besides Bentonville. Well, we also learned that Elkins is extremely deep. Yes. I mean, yeah, they can uh, score bunches, bunches of points there. Uh, ben Napier, their quarterback, threw four touchdown passes. You know, Walden was out. So they plug in a, a kid with the last name of Ham, and Ham goes Ham. He pretty much goes <laughs> Ham's on Prairie Girl, <laughs> which is crazy. And you got to love Coach Watson and the coach talk. You know, hey, oh, yeah. you know, we're banged up. It's going to be a tough game going over there in the Prairie Grove. And uh, I think it was over by halftime. Uh, and then you're running into some teams, too, that are just, I mean, like Parkview is so dominant. They're playing, you know, maybe a half of football. Uh, so Coach Bolden, uh, you know, does an amazing job of keeping those kids motivated. I don't know what he's doing. Uh, you know, maybe he's on the star program. You get, you know, you know, so many bags of Skittles if you score a touchdown or get a tackle. But, uh, you know, it's amazing. Big game down in the east. Uh, we're going to have Rivercrest Osceola. Yeah. Which you can't wait to talk about. Um, you know, Cavante got healthy this past week. You know, he only threw six touchdowns, three to Buddha. Uh, so they're just still rolling. Uh, and like I said, this is the heart of the season. You know, you got three weeks left and everybody's kind of plugging out. That's why it's so hard to pick, you know, who's on top and who's on bottom. Well, it is. Everybody's, you know, kind of, you're seeing those spots start to fill where we're getting 7 8 West a little bit later on. We're going to maybe see if one, two, four right here, real quick. Mouth, what'd you learn? I learned that uh, at Farmington, Tommy T Coach Tice is just doing Coach Tice things. <laughs> I mean, I was over there last last week to present uh, Aiden Lester, the Player of the Week, and their practice is just a they're just a well oiled machine all the way down. Yeah, they are played well with, <laughs> with Coach Tice being the uh, head coach and CEO overseeing everything. He's got. He's got them going exactly the way he wants them to go right now. And that was a heck of a game between them and Bologna. Uh, yeah, it was. Bologna, Bologna's got a good football team. It was it's crazy. Well, Daryl, let's go ahead and get into it. Let's get your small school top six. Let's get into it. Man, let me tell you. Uh, it's getting tough. Dude, and I'm telling you, people, people are calling us on this. Or they're, they're calling you out. You're out I know. Big week. And here's the thing is, you've got to play good people. We don't. We're yeah. not going to reward you for beating on the bottom of the conference, no. okay? No, right. we're, we're not we interested in those stats. We're not yes. interested in stats. We're not, you know, we're into the we're into trying to find our our top true six right here. Okay. We got some also's though. Okay. You know, Arkadelphia's been in our top six. They're on the cusp there. Got great quarterback in Bryson McCoy. Uh one that's kind of sneaking around, of course. Warren's gonna drop out. 
Oh, guess, Uncle Bo. Uncle Bo. Uncle Bo, 41 7 over Star City does not impress me. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to drop out of there. No nope, shot at the Star City, but it's 41 to 7. All right. Uh, so we're dropping out. Junction City uh, is still on, uh, on the outside looking in. That, Junction City's figured out something, though. They got three kids, Baker, Banks, and, and Tolls. Those dudes have 22 sacks combined. So the sack machine's turned up a little bit in Junction City uh, right now. Four dice. Our red bugs are on the way out, looking out. Uh, they're, they won 54-8 to eight over uh, Lake Village, only giving up seven points a game. Conway Christian rolled over Mountain Pine on the uh, outside. I tell you, somebody else is sneaking around on the top six. You ready? You ready for this? The Rattlers, baby. The Rattlers. <laughs> They're coming back, man. They're coming back. And a 54-8 to eight win over Lafayette County, man. I, I'm excited about them. Uh, Brody Marone is our – our tail back there is having an outstanding season so far. Murfreesboro, uh, they're going to make some noise there. That's you know, they're, boys they're running over there. Yeah, they, they got some dudes over there. Uh, number six, we're going to go with our first pick. Our number six is going to be the Osceola. Osceola comes in off a 47 17 uh, victory over Harrisburg this past week. Uh, got a great running back uh, in their eye in Rivercrest at home. Yes, Those people don't, what do they not like? They don't he, like people from Rivercrest. <laughs> what i'm hearing no they don't they yeah don't. they told me not to put the hat on this week because i'd be a target all week long i didn't <laughs> want anybody to roll like come and get me number five is carlisle and once again it's not your daddy's carlisle they they beat poen which was three and oh going into the league thought they had a a really good season going on carlisle beats them 62 to 20 tall tankersley uh their freshman maybe sophomore quarterback man he's got a gun on him uh, threw for 178 yards last week uh, in the big, huge win there. Threw two, three t- touchdown passes. They're averaging 45 points on offense, too, by the way, Carlisle is. Boonville, doing Boonville things, as the mouth would say. 40 to 8 over West Fork, giving up eight points a game. All right, they got a big, huge one this week, too, with Mansfield, yep. uh, which is going to be fun to talk about here in a little while, too. Our Rivercrest Colts coming at number three. Just this rolling, week's man. big hit. Yeah. How about Jaden Young this week? Jaden Young had six catches for 104 yards, three touchdowns. All right. He had 16 tackles. <laughs> the guy had 16 tackles and an interception. Yeah. Uh, had quite a game this week. Uh, number two, Prescott Curly Wolves rolling in at number two. Dakari Prater had five touchdowns. He had three through the air, two on the ground. Um, it, this is this. This is a great stat. Four of six passing. Three touchdowns. <laughs> I, don't know what I don't know what happened on the, on the fourth one. That's pretty amazing, though. And like I said, Elkins. Elkins with a big win this week over Prairie Grove. Averaging 50 points, giving up nine. I think people don't understand that they play a little defense there, too. Uh, ben Napier threw four touchdown passes. Uh, Connor Ham was the kid that replaced Walden at tailback and uh, had a great game against Prairie Grove. That was over probably pretty much at the half. Yes. Uh, so, once again, those guys are, are rested up going into it. And then that leads us into our big school sticks. Big school sticks on the outside looking in. Uh, at number seven, I'd say number seven would be Bentonville. Uh, yeah, I know. Bentonville. Wow, Bentonville. can he get the top six, baby? A little, little bit more gas. Do a little bit more gas in the fire there. Uh, you know. both, baby. Okay, I like it. You know, coach is a tech guy, so I got to get yeah. him fired up there. You can use this in the pregame. Uh, yeah, but- Bentonville. <laughs> Uh, Trevor Trevor Grant had a great game last week against Bentonville. Three for 271 in our hearts, like we said, four touchdowns. Didn't turn it over, which was huge uh, in their success there. Catholic is another school that's on the outside looking in. Back view. Uh, you know, Catholic squeaks out a win, 51-48 over Sheridan. Uh, you have Rodgers. We like some Mounties right there. Jeff Reagan's playing great at quarterback. Had a bunch of turnovers, scored on an interception return, uh, 94 yards last week. Moralton. Morton's hanging out there too. The McNabs don't want me to put them in the top six, though. They said just leave us alone, man. Don't be guessing on us. Uh, Shallow Christian and Mason is on a on a tear again over twelve hundred yards rushing. This this Eldridge kid, this Max sophomore, and you might know him by his dad's J.R. Eldridge. Uh, he's coming on fast too. He's a great athlete. Uh, he he had seven carries a couple weeks ago for one hundred twenty one yards. They beat Russellville this past week. Shallow did. Four. 21, and like I said, they're sneaking around. Our number six is going to be Benton, Benton Panthers. 
off a big win over El Dorado, 56-31. Drew Davis, their quarterback, is outstanding. He's got all kinds of weapons on the outside, and they're scoring a ton of points, a ton of points. And we look for them to, you know, make a long run into the playoffs. We kind of picked them early to maybe even yeah. challenge Greenwood. Uh, we'll see on that. Pulaski Academy is going to come in at number five. Had a huge pick six to seal the game against Cabot. Cabot played their hearts out. Uh, it was back and forth pretty much the whole entire night. Uh, Brandon Cobb's over – I mean, the guy's almost got 2,500 yards of total offense, which is crazy <laughs> to me. Uh, Parkview rolls in at number four because they – they I mean, it's Parkview, for God's sake. They won 57-7 over Texarkana. They're averaging 50 points a game. Think about that, too, because they're only playing two quarters. <laughs> Great. Uh, crazy there. Uh, play who you got, though. Conway, Conway, quarterback was out this past week. Uh, Wesley Tapp, the junior quarterback, comes in, goes 8 of 13 for three touchdowns and a big, huge win. Uh, that's going to set them up down the line. We just got this big collision between Conway and, and Bryant uh, that's going to occur eventually. Greenwood, 49 to 14 over Lake Hamilton last week is our number two. Kane Archer doing Kane Archer things, their mouth. He was 18 of 21 uh, for 240 yards and four touchdowns. He carried it seven times for 90 yards. Uh, might not be the better uh, wide receiver group be even on Saturdays than they've got down there. Champ Davis, the Arrington kid, uh, Carnes, they're, they're phenomenal. They're figuring out how to run the ball a little bit too, yeah. which is kind of scary. Uh, it's kind of scary because now I don't know what you do in the secondary. I don't know. You can't play zone – you play man, they're going to run you off and let Archer run, and uh, there's all kinds of good things that happen. Greenwood's defense is really, really underrated, too. I think their offense is just so explosive. Uh, number one, Bryant. Number one, Bryant. The Hornets remain 62-0 over Southwest this past week. Uh, Thrash, uh, Walker, the quarterback, run by accommodations, phenomenal. But here's the big key. Here's the big key looking forward to it. This guy is number two, Elijah Hill. Yeah. Right? Defensive lineman can flat uh -huh. run sideline to sideline. I mean, you can run away from him, he can still catch it. And then the two bookends we love inside Jaden Jones and Malachi McDonald, the two junior, uh, 90 and 99. I mean, you still can't move them. We haven't no. found anybody. They're not can. hard, and folks, they're not hard to find, just like and they're not hard to find. Them. Yes, they're right up front and they are they are extremely physical. But yes, that's our big six. Big six. Well. I like your list right there. You know, I can still think Brian, I, I would probably put after that impressive bent bill. I know you're kind of got something going on here, but I would have probably got Tim the top six. I don't think there's any questions about it. Well, Daryl, let's go. Let's hit her. Here's our player of the week this week. Uh, but it should be a, a happy time over at the Grant family this week. Uh, Cause Trevor Grant's going to be our player of the week uh, from Bentonville high school through for 271 yards and a big, huge win over Fayetteville. Like I said, I thought he had, complete control of the field. Uh, he also had great support with his offensive line and his running back, Finkel. Uh, but he also counted for four touchdowns. Uh, like I said, you know, he'd been splitting time there a little bit at quarterback, and I think they've made the right decision here, and, and Trevor led him to a huge, huge victory. No doubt, no doubt. Well, Mouthing, you'll be up there to see them this week. Well, let's go ahead and do this. Let's bring on our guest picker this week from the Morning Rush, Ty Richardson. Ty, welcome to the show, baby. Hey, Jeff. What's going on? Sorry, I was going to be myself. What's going on, guys? What's Happy up? to be here. There we go, man. We're, we're going to be checking your work. I know you cover the Hogs mostly and during, you know, during the day and everything, but you know, you're an old Little Rock Christian guy, I to believe. Am I correct about this? That's correct. Uh, we weren't worth uh, – you know what, in high school football back when I, I was in school, didn't play, uh, played a little junior high, but I was not cut out to play high school football. But uh, since then, there's been a lot of success. Uh, had a state championship a few years back with Justice Hill, and uh, they're still pretty good, but not the same level as some of the, the competition they're having to play at the classification they're at now. Yeah, well, they're they're up there in the middle of it. We're gonna be checking. Yeah. We're gonna check your work here. Sit back, pick with your brain, not your heart. You, I mean, you're you're in radio. You get the phone calls. You got mouth calling in, yelling at you, and all. You know, you're gonna get people gonna get critical of you. I mean, it's just the way it goes. But pick with your brain. It's okay to lose a few friends on the way. It's okay, guys. Okay, all it's right. All, just it's all about the competition here. Cast them aside. Just go yeah, for the yeah. Go it's for a, the uh, go for the throat in this case. Yeah. You got it, coach. Well, we'll do it right here. Well, guys, let's recap from last week. A uh, lot better week for me. Uh, got focused in a little bit. Uh, we had the Harding uh, Washtenaw game was our extra game, and what a ball game that was at the end. Uh, I was eight and three. The mouth was nine. 
nine and two. Daryl, you were seven and four, and our guest picker, Coach Smith, last week was six and five. That that gives uh, I'm fifty seven and twenty four overall. Mouth, you're fifty six and twenty five. Daryl's fifty two and twenty nine, and our guest picker's uh, fifty one and thirty. Well, let's get into it, guys. This is probably the biggest games that we've had as far as from top to bottom. I don't think there's any question. We were talking about conference championships. We're talking about highly ranked teams. Let's get in and start in the number 10 here. Prescott at Bismarck. This, these two guys have been colliding. Bismarck's, you know, kind of an up and comer. Had a great run last year coming up. Uh, Prescott's just been dominant. Daryl, you got them number two overall in your poll. Break this one down for us. Well, you know, Prescott's come off of a 49-6 to uh, win over Perkins Chapel, Dakari Prater, uh, the Tulsa signee, is the, the quarterback. He does all kinds of things. He had five touchdowns in that game. Uh, Dwayne White also leads uh, the Prescott Curly Woods in, in interceptions, uh, so they're very good defensively, too, uh, once again. They're averaging 50 points a night, and they're only giving up 10. Uh, so they're on a, uh, they're doing Curly Wood things, yeah, as my main man. mouth would say. Coach Glass is fired up, too. He's a little mad about the JV team. That yeah, that, in there JV did, scores. Yeah, it's costing us. Yeah, costing us. Yeah, <laughs> JV defense don't pick it up at the end. Yes, yeah, so we're going to pick it up. We're not going to play them this week. Uh, Bismarck. Bismarck comes in with the Keithleys. You know, Coach Keithley and his, and his sons uh, are off to a great start there. Uh, they beat Cam and Harmony Grove 52-16, to 16, uh, which, you know, uh, Cam and Harmony Grove early in the year, everybody was – Pretty excited about their season and, and where they were headed to with the with the big win over Junction early on. Uh, it starts with their quarterback, uh, the coach's son. He's a spectacular player, and this is one of those games. Bismarck, uh, you know, it's it's been circled. Everybody's been talking oh, yeah. about it. Uh, you know, uh, Prescott's going on the road uh, to Bismarck, uh, and I'm thinking that uh, the Curly Woods travel real well. <laughs> uh, we'll all be there. They'll, <laughs> they'll all be excited. The whole Glass family will be. Oh, yeah. uh, and so uh, we're headed down to the Bismarck here to show who is the person uh, to beat. So I'm going to take the Curly Woods in this one to travel to Bismarck and, and get a win. Who do you like the Curly Woods? Mouth, who do you like? This is a great matchup right here. But I've got to go with the Curly – got to go with Prescott Curly Wolves. I've been riding Bismarck all year. But uh, just look at what – Prescott's been doing, and I don't see it slowing down. Well, you got Prescott. All right, Ty, who you like in this one? I know you you started this saying not to pick with my heart, but I, I one of my good friends' father is a, is a die. He's he went to Prescott, and uh, he's talked about the football days there when 30, 40 some odd years ago. And uh, based on what they've done so far this season, and they're the road favorite, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay not go on an island to pick Prescott too. So it might be up to you, Coach. Well, Ty's going with Prescott. Guess what? I'm going with Prescott, too, because, baby, that's a long – they've been winning for a long time over there in Bismarck. Hadden. I like Bismarck's team. This is going to be a close one. It's going to be a defensive battle, but I'm going to go with Prescott. All right. This one here is for probably a conference championship also. You got the Boonville Bearcats. Daryl, you got number four. Having to co over to Coach Overton over there at Mansfield's have a phenomenal year. They beat Charleston early on in the year. Boonville's just been cruising down, playing defense, doing doing what they do. What what do you think about this matchup, Daryl? Well, Boonville seven zero four zero on the in the conference season. They're giving up seven points in conference play, averaging forty eight points. They don't turn it over. Uh, they're the, your old fashioned Boonville. Uh, we're going to run it right at you. Big offensive line to lean on. Uh, like I said, they beat West Fork last week, forty to eight. Uh, they're going on the road this uh, week to Mansfield, uh, who is also uh, on a tear, too. They beat Cedarville last week 46-6, to which is their common opponent. Both yeah. of them beat them about the same score. Uh, they're uh, – Mansfield, it's all about the Burton boys. Yeah. Uh, all three of the Burton boys are phenomenal. Uh, Strozer is a you know, veteran quarterback that comes back into their play. Their skill people are back from last year. Uh, Samuel Burton – uh, is uh, the second leading rusher. Actually, he's the wide receiver. Um, Daniel Burton is the leading rusher with uh, uh, 54 carries for 622 yards, nine touchdowns. They do it with all three of those guys. Uh, Daniel Burton's actually their second leading tackler, too. Uh, but like I said, Boonville and tradition, uh, you know, Mansfield's still trying to get over the hole. They, they, they need to put Coach Elmore in the Hall of Fame. I think well, would they do that? I mean, we've been, we've been you know, been, been I mean, they could be the curse. 
Could be, no, the, could be the problem. Could be the difference. Could be, you know. could be the difference here. No. At least give it a shot. Yeah. Uh, if it, if, if uh, what happens, but Coach uh, Doc does a phenomenal job. I'm going to take Boonville on the road to win this one. Boonville on the road. Mouth, who you like in this? Well, I'm going to have to go. I'm going to shock everybody and go Mansfield. Oh, going Mansfield. Oh. What? The mouth never goes outside the box. Right. What? what is going on with that guy? Guys moving it on over there. Any, any reason? Did you just like them? It's going to be a great game, but my whole my whole thing is is home field. This game, home field. We're going mm-hmm. to this home field thing. Okay, good new strategy you got here. Okay, all right, Ty, you're close to this one here. You don't <laughs> I'll ride down the street from. You. I was going to say, yeah, uh, the better barbecue might be in Boonville, guys. It reads, but I'm going to take. The Tigers, Mansfield, get oh. the upset in this one. I'm, I'm I'm going with the mouth in this one. I like the home team to pull it out. Uh, Boonville is coming in hot, like you're saying, but uh, home field advantage is going to be a big deal this weekend. Oh, Ty's going with Mansfield. I'm going with Boonville. I kind of feel the same way I do like Prescott, boys. Uh, uh, that train's been running a long time, and it's ready to roll. I think Coach Overton doing a good job. And they got over the, cup, uh, the hump of beating Charleston, but uh, Boonville's a different animal, guys. It's just a whole different animal down there. All right, big, huge 5A West matchup right here. Uh, Tommy Tyson, the farm the Cardinals, go down to Bologna to take care of business and then uh, or travel to Moralton. Moralton, really, if you look at them, they're two plays or they're sitting there 4-0 and and they're two plays away from being 2-2, two and two, but they made the plays and they're sitting there undefeated. Moralton's back in the 5A West. Farmington's picked to win this conference, been back and forth. Ought to be a heck of a game, Daryl. Break this one down. Well, like we said, Farmington's figured out a lot of things since that opening game. Uh, yeah. uh, they beat Bologna last week, 27-14. Aiden Lester, uh, you know, the quarterback, is just a phenomenal player. Uh, and they figured out some things offensively they can do uh, and kind of hang their hat on. They're giving up 13 points a game in conference play, which is by far best in the West. Uh, defensively. So Coach Moreland's doing a great job on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, they're scoring 35 points in conference play. Uh, Moralton, kind of a different story here. Moralton's averaging about 45 points a game in the West, and they're giving up about 31 points a game. Uh, and Moralton is at home. You know, they've struggled a little bit on the road, like you said, in the, in the tight games. Uh, but they get to come back home. Uh, like I said, Moralton is, uh, you know, Moralton is, this is their statement game. This is, this is, is going to be for the West. Uh, yeah, you know, is. Farmington was picked early in the season. Uh, so I'm sure the McNabbs are going to like this pick that I'm about to make, all right, because I'm 0 for 2 when I, when I pick against Moralton. So I'm going to take Farmington. The oh, Cardinals. go with Farmington. The Cardinals are traveling wow. to Moralton. I know. I know. Matthew, you were just over there this past week. What's the vibe over there in Farmington? They're coming off another big win. They're 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 really they're really confident. Coach Tice is really happy with how his team come on, how they come along. Uh, but you know, the problem with this game for me, I'm close to both programs. Oh, you are. Don't I mean? That's why it works. Yeah, that's why we talk about the heart now. I'm yeah. close to both. I'm close to both <laughs> programs, but. Uh, there's just something about this Moralton team and the Fighting McNabs. I'm going to go with the Fighting McNabs. And oh, my oh. God, Coach Tice is going to be all over you, man. I love it, though. All right. So, hey, that's why you pick with your brain right there a little bit like there. Good mouth. That a boy. All right, Ty, this, this in here, I mean, it's, it should be a great battle. Coach Tice coming, you know, out of retirement. You know the whole story. Coach McNabs down there, great history at Moralton. The Devil Dogs have been tough. Break it down for us, Ty. Yeah, Moralton, right down the road from Pattyville, where my grandma's farm is, very familiar with um, Devil Dogs. Um, my mom grew up in St. Vincent, like Coach Z did, so I, I really love that area. Uh, we had a chance to interview Coach Tice before the season. I think y'all have got a chance to, too. I, I'm just still shocked he wants to keep coaching, but he is, and he's got a fo- good football team. So, I'm once again, going to take the road one in this one, guys. I think I, I got the Cardinals going down to beat the Devil Dogs this weekend. Going with the Cardinals. Ty's going with the Cardinals. I'm going with the Cardinals also. I think uh, I think we're playing really good football right now. I think Coach Manab and them are too. Maybe some injuries here or there, and I just think Farmington's just hitting on all cylinders. Will be a close, close matchup in, in this one right here. And the all great right. thing about this game too is, is Tom, Coach Tice has got a little fire in his belly. He does. <laughs> he said. 
<laughs> he's got a little fire in his belly right now. Don't, don't think, you know, Coach Tice that people, you know, he's won so many championships. He still counts them, though, guys. He still counts them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Here we go. Uh, headed to Central Arkansas here. Uh, Cersei at Robinson. Cersei was down 21 to nothing. Come yes. back and win. Unbelievable against Pine Bluff last week. Robinson's just been pretty much dominant all year long. Had a tough, close one against Lakeside earlier. Uh, you know, Coach Zach Clark just finding ways to win. Uh, this, you know, this could be a possible, you know, Coach Clark and them got really the tough ones left. I believe they got Mall Mel BB left after this one. You know, Robinson's just rolling. This could be for one all the way to a three or four seat. Break it down, Daryl. Oh, yeah. Cersei, you know, uh, coming in here, like you said, they got down to Pine Bluff 21-0. Uh, fought back and ended up winning 28-21. DeAndre Shockley had two interceptions for Cersei. Uh, Johnny Bell, their quarterback, kind of makes everything go. Uh, he engineered like a nine-play drive to get them back into it. Uh, they've got some weapons, too. Uh, you got Curtis Goodrich, who's their leading rusher. He has 94 carries, 579 yards, and 14 touchdowns. This is a little different Cersei team. Than yeah. They're physical. They are. Uh, Zach's bunch is physical. They'll run the football on you. You know, you can, you can tell – uh, you know, they'll still go over the top a little bit. Johnny Bell's their quarterback. He's 89 of 144 for 1,300 yards and 12 touchdowns. Jesse Sumter, wide receiver on the outside, 51 catches, 531 yards, four touchdowns. Uh, Willie Gaines, their leading tackler. Uh, he's inside of the linebacker with 54 tackles on the year. Like I said, they're really, really physical, uh, which is – I don't know if that's a knock or whatever, but it's it's something that Cersei's not really known for being. Uh, but they can they can line up and run the football when they want to. Uh, Robinson coming in 4-0, extremely talented. Uh, they have so many weapons on offense, I don't have time to list all of them. Uh, <laughs> defensively, defensively though, is what they're very, very good on defense. You know, yeah. they score – uh, on the defensive side of the ball, uh, Isaiah Reese has 64 tackles on the year for him. Kevin Williams leads them with four INTs uh, on the defensive side. And like I said, Robinson just seems like they find ways to win. Uh, last week against a really, really good BB team, they won 26 to 16. This is a home game, so Cersei's coming to Robinson. Uh, and I think Robinson knows what this is all about. Been in this game a couple of times. So I'm going to take Robinson at home to beat Cersei. Robinson at home. I, I, I could see that. Math, you're close that you live there. Cersei, you're close to the new line offenses program right there. Talk to us a little bit about this one. Um, it's just a ma- – Cersei, you hit it on the head. They're they're physical. They're more physical than they've ever been. Um, they're playing – get down 21-3 to three last Friday night and, gosh, come back, hold Pine Bluff scoreless and score 25 points in the fourth quarter. I mm-hmm. mean – it was just an incredible game. Cersei's hot, right? They're hot right now. Robinson's been hot all year. Uh, it's going to be a heck of a game. I'm going to go with the. I'm going to go with the Cersei Lions. Going with the Cersei Lions, staying hometown right there. We knew. We knew that. From the oh, yeah. <laughs> he had us leaning. He had us you know, leaning a little bit. Yeah, I, I think he, he pulled it. Hey, Coach Phil, yeah. he pulled a McAfee. He pulled a McAfee. Yeah. He gave yeah. all these good things. Yeah, he's like, I'll roll this. yeah I'm going with. Oh, there we go. <laughs> hey, right. I couldn't. I couldn't live with with new life with Coach Clark if uh, <laughs> if he'd be calling cussing me about. Yeah. Five o'clock, or whenever he sees the show, he'd be cussing me. So I can't, I can't have that. I, I don't know about Coach Coach Clark cuss. Yeah, he's a good Catholic boy. I don't see him. Doing yeah, that. Oh. All, right. All right, Ty, break this down here for Cersei and Robinson, baby. Man, I'll tell you what, Robinson, when I was in high school, wasn't worth anything. But like, kind of like Leonard Christian, they picked it up. I mean, Amarian Harris is uh, up on the hill right now. He's doing pretty solid things for the offensive line. Um, I know they've had a couple other guys that have come up to Fayetteville and gone to other college programs. So I'll take the Senators, uh, Little Rock team, uh, to get this one done at home, guys. Well, I, I, you make great points. Everybody did. I like Cersei. They, they're more physical. They've got committed to the weight room really heavy the last couple of years. They're starting to pay off for them. I think Robinson's too much. If Cersei gets behind, they've done that twice and made the comebacks. Hey, that's phenomenal. You get behind Robinson 21, and it could get increased. So I, I like Robinson in this one. All right, 6A West right here. This is a huge matchup because you're probably talking about a three or four seed here possibility. Lake Hamilton goes down to the, you know Greenwood. No shame in that. Mountain Home beat Salem Springs last week. They've dealt with some injuries. 
Mountain Home at Lake Hamilton. We got on Mountain Home early, uh, got hot, you know, then played shallow, got beat, and but it's had a phenomenal year. Both teams are. Break this one down, Daryl. Well, both teams, you know, they depend on running the football. Yeah. Mountain Home, uh, uh, Jacob Chinowith starts with him. Uh, you know, they had the Miller kids score uh, two touchdowns last week in their win over Siloam. Uh, Lake Hamilton last week against Greenwood, I, you know, I'll tell you the truth, I thought they had a really, really good plan uh, to try to run the ball. Uh, Hayden Barton's their kind of their bell cow there. Uh, they lost last week to Greenwood 49-14. to 14. It's one of these that whichever one ever gets the lead yeah. is going <laughs> to – which I know this sounds crazy, but I think both of these guys, if they can get a lead, they can grind the clock out, keep their defense at bay, not have to have big, huge, long stops here. Mountain home, once again, heck of a trip all the way to Lake Hamilton, Ooh. Arkansas. You might want to leave on Wednesday if you're a fan and get there on Friday. <laughs> uh, I think Lake Hamilton at home uh, has kind of got my interest, so I'm going to go with Lake Hamilton at home to beat Mountain home. Lake and like you home. said, probably probably get a, at least a third seat out of this thing. I, I, there's no doubt. I mean, you're, you're looking yeah. at a home playoff game. Mouth, what do you think about this one? This, this game will be over in 58 minutes. Uh, <laughs> I'll have a 10 minute halftime and it'll be over in 58 minutes. Uh, Where I go over under on punts? <laughs> the under zero on the punt. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you. Uh, I just think uh, Mountain Home, and, I mean, excuse me, Lake Hamilton at home, Mountain Home's. Had a lot of injuries. Uh, Chenoweth is coming off being beat, banged up a little bit, and the quarterback was banged up last week a little bit. I but, and I just believe that's a hard trip coming from Mountain Home to to Percy, Arkansas, and I'm gonna take uh, the uh, wolf, the Lake Hamilton Wolves. Lake Hamilton Wolves. Ty, what do you think about this one? I mean, you talk about a long trip. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, I just looked up. It's four hours, and Ooh. it's not it's not USC to Rutgers, but for <laughs> Arkansas high school football, it's it's that's it's about the distance. I mean, you're nearly going from one side of the state to the other. So I'm going to take the Wolves as well. Uh, hopefully, it's a good game like you're talking about. But I, I think Lake Hamilton squeaks it out. Well, here here's what I think about this one. You know, Mountain Home, everybody's it is long ways. They're used to doing these things. I think it comes down to turnovers, just like any other game. Uh, Lake Hamilton's turned over a little bit. Mountain Home has some it's going to come down to turnovers i think this is about as evenly match but i with the home field i am going to go with the wolves of lake hamilton all right head to central arkansas you got benton who's been dominated the 6a east for the last few years going to little rock catholic at war memorial stadium which is a really hard place to play our boy at uh kevin kelly came in there last week gave the old boys at uh, catholic a scare uh daryl this is an interesting matchup this could be possible for one, two, or three seed yeah. also. Catholic sitting there. You still got Marion like, running around a little bit, but these are the top three and the top three teams of this conference. Break it down. Well, it's probably unique for Benton because, you know, they play the Salt Bowl there at War Memorial. So it won't be the like the first time they step on the, on the uh, against Catholic. Catholic uh, uh, is off to a great start. They're finding ways to win in different ways. Benton scoring a ton of points, led by Drew Davis at quarterback. He's over 1,600 yards, uh, 23 touchdown passes on the year already. Wow. That's pretty phenomenal, um, which uh, puts them on a spread about 53 points a night. Benton is hanging on people. Defensively, though, they have shown some holes. El Dorado kind of exploited them a little bit last week, uh, but they, uh, you know, they ended up getting 56 to 31. But like I said, you can score some points on Benton. Uh, Catholic. Catholic has been putting up points too. Uh, they won fifty-one to forty-eight over yeah. Sheridan last week. Jackson English, their quarterback, really good. He was eighty-one. He's eighty-one of one thirty-two for over twelve hundred yards and uh, fifteen touchdowns in the year. Noel Lewis too is their tailback. Uh, does a great job running the football for him. One hundred nineteen yards, five hundred ninety-one yards on the ground. Uh, three touchdowns. Uh, Braxton Burks is their explosive wide receiver on the outside. He has eight touchdowns on the year. Uh, so Catholic, like I said, they can score you know, uh, a bunch of points defensively. They just find ways of getting you off the field uh, and they'll play some guys both ways too, which is kind of, especially in the secondary and Catholic is at home. Uh, Benton, like we said, we picked it the first of the year. I'm waiting for them to kind of put a complete game yeah. together. I think this might be this week. So I'm going to take Benton over Catholic. 
Take him bending over cap it. All right, Mouth. Well, I'm just going to tell the people they go get to Memorial uh, War Memorial Stadium about two hours before the game. They will be impressed when the when those beautiful athletes from Benton get off the bus. <laughs> they they are they are pretty. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna tell you. Uh, I know War Memorial is a great home field advantage for Catholic, but I got I got to go with the I got to go with Benton in this game. Because Ben played in one wall in big game, they're not scared of the turf. You know, they're used to what it feels like to play there. Used to the dressing room, no big deal to them. Benton in a close one. Benton in a close one. Ty, you're kind of close to this one. I mean, you grew up around both these teams right here. Yeah, love. I've been watch, love watching Ben Panther and Braylon Russell for the Hogs this season. I, I, I want to take Ben too. Got a lot of friends with Little Rock Catholic. A couple of it's been. Uh, I'll take the visiting Panthers. I, I think y'all's points well made. They played in the stadium before. It'd be a little different if this was unique, but it's not. So I got Ben in this one, guys. Well, I, I like Benton also. I think Catholic schedules caught up with them. I mean, they can only play who's on their schedule, but they. You know, finally, with the Sheridan scare last week, they're going to be ready to go. Could have been looking ahead, but I think Ben just has too much. All right, heading up here to Northwest Arkansas. Man, it, this game, this is an old rival game. Now it's gotten real, it's going to be real big now, and it has been as big over the last couple of years. You got Springdale and Fayetteville. Springdale, who we were loving, Coach Hobbs is having a phenomenal year. Started off 6 and 0, believe 6 and 1 right now, obviously, with a big loss last week to. To Rogers, Fayetteville goes over to Bentonville, and wow, you know Bentonville just pretty much dominates that game. And so, where's Fayetteville? What were you in a sense of urgency here? Springdale's coming off loss, heading over there, big rival. Darrell, what do you think about this? Well, you know, we we ran into a juggernaut that is yeah. called Rogers. Uh, Rogers won uh, last week, forty-eight uh, nine, which kind of ended the streak for the Red Dogs. Lost a quarterback. Uh, in that game, uh, backup came in and played well, though. Uh, biggest problem with, that they had was, one, they couldn't sustain drives and they turned it over. Uh, that led to scores easy for Rodgers. So, uh, you know, we can't get behind uh, in this one. Springdale can't because it's hard for them to catch up because they're not as explosive as as most teams, especially pounding on the ground. Fayetteville, here's the biggest thing. Here's the biggest stat I can tell you on the Fayetteville Benton League. They gave up 472 yards of total offense, and they turned it over five times. Yeah, uh, that will lead to you getting beat 41 to 10, uh, which <laughs> Bentonville, <laughs> Bentonville definitely did. Uh, yeah, we've seen enough of that because uh, uh, they had some great offensive performances. And uh, Taylor Kidd had nine catches for 134 yards. Delamar had seven for 102. You know, they they put up some yards offensively and defensive. I mean, they just turned it over. Uh, and you know, the only team that I know that can overcome five turnovers is Greenwood. Yeah. Uh, I mean, literally, and still score 60. So, I think Fayetteville is going to be at home, they know how important this game is. I think Springdale is still trying to break through that, you know, that that break that door down. Uh, but once again, you know, they're they're sitting right in that third, fourth position right now. Springdale is uh, so, but Fayetteville at home, I think they're going to be extremely motivated this week. Uh, and they understand the importance of that game and, and being back into the uh, when it gets into playoff time. Uh, so I'm gonna take Fayetteville at home. Fayetteville, Mouth, uh, you know, you were really high on the Powerful Dogs last week, and and uh, you know, they got beat. Do they bounce back? You love Coach Hobbs over at Springdale, also. Uh, talk to us a little bit about this one. This is going to break down to another. Rival of the old days. Yes, sir. Uh, Springdale's but coming off a loss to Rogers, but they still have had a great year. They they ought to be they ought to feel good about themselves going into this one. But uh they better be careful about poking the purple dog Friday <laughs> night. As that purple dog is coming off a huge loss to Bentonville and uh, and that dog's gonna be mad. Whoa, he's gonna be mad. I gotta go with I gotta go with the Fayetteville Purple Dogs. Go with the Purple Dogs. Ty, this is an interesting matchup. I mean, you know mm -hmm. the history, which you know, Springdale's really been hot this year. Coach Hobbs done a great job. Fayetteville come off very disappointing loss to, to Bentonville and and not a very good performance. Playing at home, though, what do you think? Yeah, I, I mean, I, everyone knows about Fayetteville and Benville now, but this was pre-Benville and Fayetteville. This was the rivalry back in northwest Arkansas today. I'm going to take Fayetteville on this one. 
Uh, Harmon Field is a tough place to play. A lot of people in Northwest Arts all over the state know that. Uh, both teams got rocked the week before, but I think Coach Dick's team bounces back last next this next week at home. So I'm going to take full of the Purple Dogs in this one. I, I'm going to take the Purple Dogs too, and I think it's going to be a statement game. I think it's one of them deals you re, got to refocus and you turn it over five times, give up that many points. There's going to be a lot of corrections, and that ought to be a fun practice on Monday, ladies and gentlemen. All right, staying up here in Northwest Arkansas. I bet it's closed. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. bet it's a closed yeah. track. Yeah, I bet they're not they're not serving Gator. Probably the piss wing on the fences right now, so no parents can see what's about. I don't. To I don't know, <laughs> coaches. I don't know if y'all caught uh, Dan Hampton on our airwaves this week, but he was telling all these things back in the day. It's like, yeah, they used to run us until we threw up, until our oh, feet yeah. bled, and all this stuff. And it's like that just made us tougher. And <laughs> everyone was like, just doing the piss off and everything. <laughs> That's how we used to practice back then. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's great well i i you know this rogers for spoon on here got rogers at bentonville uh this ought to be staying here in northwest Arkansas. all bit tough one before we do that let's go ahead and bring on head coach at bentonville uh jody grant coach what a huge statement win this past week against the fayetteville purple dogs i mean let's get let's kind of recap your your year i mean you, you started off, you loaded up like you always do in your non-conference, play the toughest non-conference, uh, anybody in the state. Y'all even go to, you know, Conway, have a hiccup, and, and they pretty much dominated that game early in the year. Y'all came on, had some injuries, bounced back here, there, and then you get the Purple Dogs and created turnovers, just a dominant performance, uh, both sides of the ball. Great job by your staff. Talk to us a little bit. I mean, how are you feeling about that one? I know you got to move on. We're going to talk about the next poem, which is it gets even bigger now. Uh, talk to a little bit about your team's mindset, where they're at right now. I mean, they got to be feeling good about themselves. Yeah, no, we're very excited about where we're at. You know, a lot of people, uh, you know, thought it was crazy, the, the non-conference that we played, truthfully, including myself, a lot of during that process. But it was for reasons like this. When we put on the tape of Fayetteville Bulldogs, we've seen teams similar to this. And we did. We – we opened up with a great Tulsa Union team and then went to, you know, what I think right now is probably one of the best teams in the state at Conway. Uh, and then we went up to the number one team in Missouri at uh, Lee Summit North. So when we put on the film of some of these other teams, we'd been, we'd seen it all. So uh, we felt like that formula would pay off and it did. Our kids played really, really good Friday night. They were excited about this opportunity. Really proud of our staff. I thought we did good in all three phases. You know, you talk about Fayetteville offensively, you talk about them defensively, but I'm telling you, they are dominant in the special teams. And our yeah. special teams coordinator, Dakota Baggett, did a great job putting together a plan. And, you know, it was just fun to play out. And, you know, we're excited about where we're staying right now. Well, and it was, you know, huge game. People – and we got talking about – we had Kenny Smith on last week. And we – you know, they, the other guys, you know, they hadn't been on that field where playing at Bentonville, it's a, it's a difficult place to go play. I don't care who you are. It's one of the toughest places I've, I've ever coached in. Well, that country don't get any easier. Big win with – Against the Purple Dogs, a big rival. Now you got your your main rival coming in, the Rogers Mountain. So let's just be honest; they're playing as well as anybody in seven A. They you know had Fayetteville beat you know right there at the end. The uh, right led the whole game, and and Fayetteville came back and beat them. But you know they had a shot to win it at the end. I think Coach Harvest has done a good, great job. Got a great quarterback spreading it out. He's good enough to throw it. Good enough to run it. Kind of holding up defensively. They're doing a very good job with a nice class, and you know this team. Talk to him a little bit about the Rogers Mounties. Yeah, it doesn't get any easier. I tell you, the Roger Mounties are what they do offensively, schematically, is really, really impressive. They're very intelligent about how they operate, what they do. Um, they got a they got a little Johnny Manziel type dude at quarterback. That's a stud. And then they have this Lindsey kid that's probably one of the best players in the state. Yeah. Unfortunately, they're both juniors, so we're gonna have to do this again down the road, you know, next year. But uh, yeah, you know, defensively. Uh, we got a work cut out for us, and and to figure out a plan for that is not not going to be easy. But uh, they're playing really good football, and had, they've been pretty dominant here in the last four weeks as well. They, I thought they played really really good against Fayetteville. Had a good plan. Um, so yeah, I mean it's 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 going to be a fun one to watch. Yeah, and they take you know go a, a very hot Springdale team just dominated them last week. I mean they, they they're kind of, they're rolling. Let's talk about your bunch a little bit. Let's see, talk about your quarterback. Uh, Trevor Grant, who's our, our 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 coaches in the mouth player of the week, had a phenomenal game. Talk to me a little bit about offensively. You know, y'all looking at controlling the game. Y'all came out firing away quick last week. 
and your explosive offense. We we're trying to get to running the ball, keep them off. Is that been not giving away plans there, or we're just going to play and do what we do? Well, we're going to do what we do. Now, I, I'm old school. I like to run the football, and I mean that's just kind of what what I like to do. But uh, we we have some some threats that you know on the perimeter that we got to get get them the ball and let them do their thing. So we'll we'll probably try to stay pretty balanced and just see what we can do. You know, obviously Rogers is they're they're a pressure defense. They like to like a lot of bring a lot of hats at you and do some stuff. So um, we'll have our work cut out for us. But you know, our offensive staff, you know, they do each week they do a great job of putting together a really sound plan and. We just try to make it simple for our guys to understand what we're what our goal is and what we're trying to do, and uh, then it's just about going and operate. You know, Trevor uh, has been a really a you know he's this is his first year to be the starter. He sat behind behind a really talented young man in Carter Nye the last few years, and you know he's he had you know he went through some first first few games. There were some bumps, and, and of course he was going against elite level competition. I kept telling him, just hang in there, boy, and it's it's going to look a little different as we keep going. And he's playing with a lot of confidence trust everything that we're doing i think he's you know a young man that you know being a being a coach's kid sure doesn't hurt because he's been around a long time and he understands things he asks good questions uh he gets you know i try to stay out of his way i'm a defense guy but we do spend some time watching film together and i just give him you know a different perspective than what he gets from his offensive coaches and i think that's been good for him but i will be honest with you he's he's blessed to have a lot of people around him that are talented we got a really talented running back chris ficklin and then we got a lot of, you know, really good receivers out there and our tight ends elite and our offensive line's doing a great job. So it's it kind of makes it uh, a little bit easier on him, takes some stress and pressure off of him. Yeah, and your running back's been consistent all year long. I mean, he, he played for Roadwell against Conway, saw that earlier in the year, and he he's been very, very consistent. But let me get out get you off here with this question right here. This seven eight West man's gotten real interesting. I mean, you know, uh, a, a slip up here or there, and there's still a couple games to play. But you know, obviously, y'all start to play your best football here. You know, here down the stretch. Talk to him a little bit how this seven A West. I mean, the Springdale. You know, right there in the mix. Also, Rogers is sitting there. Fayetteville. You guys. You know, uh, it's and, you know Bentville West is kind of got their got their first victory. They're in the mix. You got them down the road. Talk to him a little bit. Just seven A also in general. You know, Bryant's down there doing you know doing what Bryant does Conway's got a big one with PA just the way this is bouncing out seven eight looks like there's more teams this year yeah I mean you know seven eight west you you can't just overlook about you know you better get ready with each and every one of them because they'll uh, you know north side to me is a good example of that they've they've given everybody fits they just really hadn't been able to get it you know get it done for some of the you know they gave us fits they they gave Rogers some fits early they you know it, it, they gave Fayetteville some fits. Yes, you know, Fayetteville struggled against them offensively. And so that's just an example. You know, Harbor and, and West can score. Um, you know, so, yeah, I mean, Springdale, look at what they've done. And, and and you know, we've got them that you know on schedule down the road. So it's, it's very interesting. You look at the Central, you know, Central looks like it's – obviously it's still, you know, Conway Bryant. I think Pulaski Academy is going to, you know, get in there and make some noise. Little Rock Christian Cabot, you know, that's – I think about this from a seven A West perspective. You mess around and and you're the you're the two seed or or you, you feel good about having a buy and then all of a sudden you're you got a chance to play PA you know round two which gee uh, who wants that but so um, you know it is what it is it's it's just good football across the seven A like it has been so you know and in some of these teams that could be lower seeded um, in a sense of like a. I don't know, you look like a Cabot or a, a Little Rock Christian or even even on our end, you know, we you, we got some teams that will be a three or four seed that could, could sneak up on some people. So it could get interesting. It, it is. And and like I said, you brought up Cabot, you know, who wants to see Scotty Reed rolling in in his fifth seed? I, I wouldn't want to see that. No, no. no. Worry, you know, just the way it is. Well, Coach, I'll get you off here. Appreciate you spending some time with you. Congratulations on the, on, the, on the huge win this past week, and good luck to you this week. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. See you, buddy. All right, see you. But well, Jody feels very confident in his team. His team performed well. You know, they went off through the non-conference and, you know, went to Conway and everybody kind of forgot about them, and then they bounced back. This game right here, and there's an interesting note here. You know, Benville has dominated this series over the last 15, 20 years. I was told by a guy that this is the senior class from Rogers. Don't, don't in fact, check me on this. They've actually kind of beat Bentonville through their way 
all the way to become senior. So this is a very interesting matchup, the psychology part of it. But then also you got to get out there and get it done. Break this one down. Like Rogers, I like I like their scheme on offense. It, you just went into the 12 to 14 year age the way they were dominant. <laughs> We just, we just dominated when we were 12 year olds. Yeah. Uh, Rogers, like I said, Rogers, Jeff Reagan, their quarterback is, and they got some weapons on the outside, but he's the guy that makes it go defensively. They are a opportunistic defense. They don't really stop you. They, they bend, but don't break. They come up with big, huge turnovers. Like I said, last week, they had a 94 yard interception return uh, by the Flores kid uh, to kind of swing the game uh, against Springdale. They beat Springdale 48 to nine. They played, Man, they were a hell mary away from beating Fayetteville, yeah. uh, which would have made this conversation completely different. I mean, I'm sure it would be our spotlight game of the week. But Coach Harbison's done a phenomenal job at Rogers, uh, taking some lumps early there to build this program back to where uh, you know back in the old Peacock days. I mean, you got to go back all the way back there to uh, when Rogers was Rogers. Uh, Bentonville coming off a huge win last week against Fayetteville. Uh, and I think this is where uh, having a coach like Coach Grant comes into play because now you got to get refocused. Here comes the new kid on the block. Uh, you get to play them at home. Uh, you know, all that you did last week is out the door right here. I mean, you're telling your kids early on, hey, look, you know, you did a great job last week, but we got to burn that and, and, and turn the page here. Uh, they had 500 yards of total offense against Fayetteville. Like I said, they had five turnovers. They cost five turnovers last week. Got great quarterback play. Uh, the Finkel kid ran 29 times for 170 yards against Fayetteville. I think that's going to be the difference in this game. I think Bentonville's going to line up and run it at them, keep Rodgers' high-octane offense on the sideline. Uh, so I'm going to take Bentonville in this one. Bentonville in this one. Mouth, what do you think about this one? You, you really like the Bounties also. So I like do. Them. I do. And it's going to be a heck of a football game. Uh, Bentonville has uh, – they've got a – make sure that they're focused this week after such a great victory against Fayetteville. That is going, that is going to be key for uh, Bentonville winning it. If they're able to win this game, that's going to be key. They're going to, they're going to have to forget, forget about all the hugs to get from the cheerleaders and all the kisses. <laughs> they got to get, they got to get focused and get, get right. Cause the, the Mounties are, Oh, they're playing at Bentonville, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, the Mount the Mounties are coming in there thinking they're going they're going to win this football game. I can guarantee you that. But the Mounties are coming to coming to Bentonville, and th from you from your experience, you tell me Bentonville's a hard place to play. And last Friday night backed it up. I am going with the Bentonville Tigers. Both the Bentonville Tigers. Ty, this is a very interesting. I mean. You know, Rogers sitting there with one loss right on the last play against Fayetteville. Bentonville sitting there undefeated. I mean, this game could screw the whole conference up or really clear it up uh, what's going to happen. What, what's your thoughts on this one? It's probably the biggest upset I'm going to pick. I'm going to go to the Mounties with Bentonville. Uh, not that their entire season pinched on the outcome of Fayetteville, but I know how important that game is for both sides, and they got it done. Sometimes after an emotional win like that, even playing that next game at home, uh, the next one's a slip up. You mentioned how close Rogers was to beating Fayetteville, already beat Springdale. So I'm going to take the Mounties. And, and, and Coach Febble, you were kind of talking about some old history with Rogers. I can't remember the last time Rogers has been good at football. So I think it's pretty unique for that that's that city and, and that fan base. So I'm going to take them to get the maybe the biggest win in seven A this year and go into Benville and win this weekend. Well, I tell you what, I like Rogers. I like their scheme offensively. I like where they're spread it out and they can run the ball. Uh, really hot, and I think they they believe uh, they believe you know they can they can play with Bentonville, and I've liked their scheme, but they're at <laughs> Bentonville, and I've just did just what we talked about last week on here. That's a hard place to play, just the atmospheres and the atmosphere of the whole thing. And it seems like you talked about the five turnovers. Seems like we used to go over there, we'd have extra turnovers or something. You know, I don't know what it was. I'm going to go with Bentonville, just I'll be honest with you, because they're playing at home. But I think this one, you're looking for an overtime game. This is going to come down to the wire. All right, let's head over to God's country right here. These Ooh. two guys, we've been mm. waiting on this, man. I'm fired up about this. And I mean, this don't get your juices flowing in Mississippi County. I don't know what will. <laughs> you got Rivercrest, who is, is rolling through this conference. Osceola, who is – 
done everything they're supposed to do. You know, Walnut Ridge, Newport, they've done the same thing, and they're fixing to meet up right here. This is going to be a great football game. Daryl, you're close to this one. You're in the mouth. Let's break it down. Well, where do we start in this? Yeah. <laughs> this is this is two heavyweights right here. I mean, uh, like we said earlier, they don't really like each other. I was told not to wear the RC hat that I would targeted all week long, so I'm <laughs> a little scared of that. Uh, Rivercrest, big, huge win, took care of business against Walnut Ridge last week, 51-20. to Cavante Washington threw six touchdown passes. He threw three to Buda Harris and three to Jaden Young, uh, who also had 16 tackles, Jaden Young did. Uh, Jaquai, uh, J Jacavion, my bad, Jacavion. Jacavion Williams had a nice six-yard uh, uh, interception return in that game. Their average about 46 yards, uh, I mean, 46 points a night, uh, Rivercrest is. Osceola comes in. Uh, actually, they're playing the, the home game here. Uh, they beat Harrisburg last week, 47-17. They're averaging about 40 points a game also, giving up 15. Uh, Jeremiah Jacobs is their, their tailback. Uh, he's won over 200 yards in a couple games this year. Uh, Tyler Bell also is their quarterback. Coach Hooks is phenomenal. Uh, this is going to be an unbelievable game, I mean, especially in the skill position parts. Uh, and I'm going to tell you the, the truth, too, is it's going to be in the 50s. I mean, I don't see these oh, yeah. guys. I mean, yeah. it's. I mean, these guys. Both of these teams can literally take a four-yard handoff, ninety yards, in the blink. Uh, you know, Rivercrest defensively has shown the ability to keep people out of the end zone. You know, they'll bend but not break. Uh, and special teams is huge. This last week was the only time that Rivercrest has not scored on special teams. Yeah. All right. And and uh, Jaden Young is actually leading the nation. He was. Because this is what happened. Somebody punted it to him, and the guy only returned it. He only returned it 32 yards instead of 50. So we dropped. Yeah, we dropped down to like 44 yards of punt. Well, at least somebody listened to us. Quit punting the guy. My yeah, God, yeah, man, you know, and I do. think he might have even ran up there and scooped it up. I think they tried to keep it. From, he just took, <laughs> off, and, took, off <laughs> took off instead. I mean, well, you got to lose your up <laughs> from 51 to 20. I mean, you know, Coach Fleming's not going to get too mad at you. No. Uh, but this is going to be a great game. You want to talk about historical programs battling each other. This is outrageous. Like they sent us the picture of all the coaches from Rivercrest, which was – I think that's the most phenomenal thing ever. Then I started thinking about, like, who do you name the field after at Rivercrest besides no. Tez? You know, Cortez Candy Field. I guess he's the one that gets it. But all those coaches uh, uh, have had phenomenal runs there. And like I said, Coach Hooks at OCO, is, uh, he's a heck of a football coach too. Uh, this is tough. But, you know, sometimes you got to go with your heart. <laughs> you got to go Rivercrest on this one. I mean, we're, we're battling this one right here. I got I got my money on Cavante Washington in this one. I think Rivercrest – uh, is just too much and too explosive on offense. And like I said, I think defensively they can keep them out of the end zone. They did a good job against Newport, and they're running back. So I'm going to take Rivercrest to go on the road and show who is the beast in the East. Oh, my gosh. You know, people, there'll be people from everywhere. Oh, this is straight stuff. lawn chair. you oh. got a lawn chair, <laughs> pickup truck, you are got a blanket back there. <laughs> yeah, this is just awesome. I wish it wouldn't be – I think they're just calling for like 85 during Friday and 55 at night. So – Hopefully it'll get a little colder than that, so we can get some real football. Yeah, but there's some hot chocolate being sold in this game. That's what I'm talking. <laughs> about. You, do, do, yeah. you think you think they'll take the cold over? They're gonna bring the cold over. Oh yeah, the coat's running, yeah. running wild. Yeah. And then just you got that other guy, that old Indian guy over there. <laughs> he be careful. Scary. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's scary. <laughs> All right, Mouth, you go at Rivercrest. You know both these pros, both these coaches. Talk to us about this. Oh. Uh, what a what a matchup! This is what November high school football is all about, right here. Uh, with the they don't like each other, first of all, and I can guarantee you the first thing that uh, Rivercrest will hear when the buses pull into Osceo, they'll hear the old John Anderson song "Seminole Wind." They go they gonna be rocking out to a little John Anderson. He'll be just a swinging while he says. <laughs> While he's singing Seminole Wind. Oh, uh, uh, I just don't, you know, Osceola's had a great year, but they've got, they've got to, uh, com they've got to combat two really bad, bad cats on uh, Rivercrest team. They got to, they got to stop Cavante Washington, the quarterback, I think, uh, threw six touchdowns this past week and, and the week before he threw a 
a 98-yard touchdown while he was sick, running the temperature and just rocking and rolling. Then they, if they get him stopped, they got to go try to stop Buddha, Buddha Harris. And that that's just some bad medicine for O.C. trying to have to take Friday night. In a close one, I'm going to take the Rivercrest Colts. The question is, will there be one punt in that game? That's a good question. Great question. They're not punted to Jaden Young. God no, bless. They better not. It's going the other way. No doubt. All right, Ty. We, 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 one thing we've established is don't punt it to that guy. Hope yeah. we're, we're, yeah. We've been sending this message out for a month now. Nobody's listening to us. It sounds like a, he sounds like a mini Devin Tester. I never understood why people yes. kicked him. The, oh, it's good. Kicked it him. <laughs> Uh, guys, I've bet on the, the Colts since Peyton Manning left the Indianapolis organization. But I'm going to bet on Rivercrest this weekend. Colts get a road victory. Give me Rivercrest. Well, I like some Rivercrest. Well, I'll tell you what. I, I OCO started coming. So, I took some time this past week and watched a little film. If you could take Rivercrest and Osceola and they could swap uniforms, you wouldn't know the difference. They look exactly the same, same type of player, same type of – skilled guys, linebackers, some big defensive linemen. But one thing that stood out was penalties and some turnovers. And Osho is fighting through that a little bit, but there's a talent they've been over, over been able to overcome it and win. I'm going to go with Rivercrest because I think they're going to take care of the football a little bit more in this one. All right, our big school game of the week, we've got Conway at PA. Before we do that, let's go ahead and bring on our Lindsay and associated guest, Coach Buck James. Coach, welcome to the show. Hey, man, I appreciate you having me on here. Well, hey, let's just get into it. I, I, let's just be up and close and honest about this. You guys are fixing to hit the thicker your conference schedule. We talked about it earlier this year. I mean, and y'all played some tough teams. You know, you got a tough – y'all beat a tough uh, – uh, Marion team's going to be top 6A. And obviously, Cabot and then Bentville, who just dominated – favorite last week you beat them at home earlier in the year but what difference you know five or six weeks would make you've got to go to Pulaski Academy tough place to play you've been playing over there since you were at Star City and that was three jobs ago so you're very familiar with it they're unorthodox got a great quarterback like their offensive line a little bit talk to us a little bit first about your team and where you're at health wise and how you are playing then talk to us a little bit about the issues at Pulaski Academy brings to to your team well i think we've played well i think we've played hard I, you know we've uh uh we haven't played a lot of opponents that ha have had a good season i think we played some athletic teams i think we've played uh some hard-nosed football teams and you know i think we called a couple teams at the right time i think uh, everything sort of went well for us and didn't go so well for who we were playing at the particular time but you know we've been solid in our offense and defensive line play um, you know, I think our secondary has been the strength of our football team all year long. And, uh, and, and we've gotten good quarterback play and, and, you know, our receivers are, are functional. They, uh, they do a great job blocking. They've caught the balls they're supposed to catch. And, you know, we haven't had a lot of bad plays. And so we put ourselves in good situations and saying that to say this is that, you know, we're playing an opportunistic team and, and, uh, uh, you know, they're very good at what they do. They're very good at home. Uh, you know, they uh, they can play with anybody. They're not a physical football team per se, uh, but they uh, they can be – they do a great job with uh, in run fits, run blitzes. Uh, they do a great job on their offensive line of protecting their quarterback, and he's a very able runner. You know, I don't know if he wants to run all the time, but he runs when he needs to and when he has to. And – uh, you know, this is a tough opponent. Uh, you know, like you said, I've been coaching against them for 20 years. Really, the only year I never coached against them was uh, the year that I came here. And um, I understand what type of program they have. I understand the, the the quality of coaches they have, the type of players they have. They have unbelievable tradition. And uh, they're a tough team to beat at home. They've always have been. Uh, uh, you know, and they they do what they do very well. It's very unorthodox uh, versus what everybody else does, but it's normal for them, and they're good at it. Well, and we, we've been talking on the show throughout the weeks. You know, I'm going to ask this question. I probably know the answer a little bit. Maybe. I'd just like to hear it. Your team really hadn't had to play four quarters, you know, really all year long. I mean, even with Bentonville or anybody, they hadn't had to play a full four. Your starters hadn't. 
what's your mindset? Does that even enter your mind? I mean, we're, your, your team's in great shape and all that part, but just a, the mental part of playing four quarters and you prepare them all summer long and all year long, does that factor in or what's your thought process through that? Absolutely, it does. You know, the most we played, uh, I think, uh, or average, I won't say the most, but average probably 25 plays a game uh, is ah. most our starters have played. And, you know, the mercy rule is for whatever it is, but they let the clock run in the second half. And, you know, it's very difficult to get everybody in the game. It's, uh, you know, if you leave them in there, then you're, you're trying to run it up and there's a fine line there. And, uh, you know, we've been in the mercy rule every single game we played this year. And, yeah. Uh, it, it's it's hurt us. Uh, you know, our average offensive line, defensive line plays probably 25 plays. And, uh, you know, conditioning will come again, uh, come into big factor because against Barant, uh, PA uh, ran 103 offensive plays. You know, so uh, – but the good thing is we play a lot of people. We, we play two really groups of defensive linemen. We play two groups of offensive linemen. We play about 10 receivers. You know, uh, we played three running backs, uh, you know, so we got some depth, uh, uh, probably more so than a lot of other teams do, that we can come in there and the next guy's just as good as the last guy. And so that helps us a little bit, you know, but we try to be in good shape. We try to, you know, condition our kids for four quarters. You know, we practice harder than – uh, than most teams do. It's a little bit more old school probably than some schools are used to. But, you know, it's a mentality. It's a mindset. It's a discipline. You know, our kids have got to go out there and, and concentrate on the small things. That's what they hope you don't do. And, um, you know, you know, you play in big game, big time players show up in big time games. And, you know, if we're going to make a run at this gauntlet we have in the last three weeks of the season, we're going to have to play good teams. And, you know, there's not going to be any more easy games. And, and our guys got to understand that. Our coaches got to understand that. And we've got to go out and play really good football, be detailed, be focused and do the little things correctly. Well, and, and I agree with you. And that four quarter thing, that's interesting just because how you got to manage that. It's really out of your control a lot, you know, a lot of times. But I'm going to get you off here with this, but what what do we, the audience need to, you know, everybody's talking about the quarterback and all skill guys. And I use kind of focus in the interior wise. What's a matchup, you know, it may be up front, might be a skill guy, but what's a matchup we need to be looking at? Well, you know, really offense and defensive line play is not a big factor when you play Pulaski Academy because uh, wherever you run the ball, they're bringing seven. And, uh, you know, wherever you're going to throw the ball, they're going to have, you know, eight to cover it. So, uh, you know, they're they're an uh, interesting team. I mean, they're a very well-coached team. They have a tremendous scheme. And, you know, you've got to be, you know, you've got to be detailed in what you're doing. You've got to win the one-on-one -on -one battles against those guys. And you got to get them tackled in open space. And, uh, you know, we've got to be able to run the football, and that's hard to do against a team like them. Uh but we've got to, you know, stretch a field out. We've got to make it 50 yards wide and 50 yards deep. And I'm sure that's the same thing Coach Lucas is saying over there with our guys. But, you know, in big games, you've got to win the line of scrimmage. You've got to force them to be one-dimensional. We've got to contain the quarterback. We can't let him scramble around and then throw down the field. And we've got to be disciplined, uh, uh, understand down and distance and situations. They're going to give you a lot of eye candy. They're going to try to – uh, make you think one thing and do another. They're going to formation you to death. You got to line up right, and then they have all the two point conversions and onside kicks that you got to be ready for. And so, uh, this will be our guys' first time experience for this. And so, we've got to go and play at a high level. We've got to try to wear them down. We've got to be more physical than they are, and we've got to be more disciplined than they are. And if we can do that, then we gives us a chance. Well, and I, I agree with you and everything. Well, Coach, I appreciate you coming on here, man. To get you off. I, you got, you know, obviously this week's huge, and then you they just get bigger and bigger each week. And we're right sitting, staring at playoffs and conference championships and playoff seedings, and it's all starting to match out. And we'll have you on down the road because you've got a lot more big games coming up. Appreciate you taking time, Liz Buck. Thanks, Jeff. See you, buddy. All right, man. All right, Coach James understands, guys. We talked about this. You know, they're starting to get to me their schedule. They've got PA, Christian, and Bryant left. And and really, if you kind of look at everything that they've done, you've got, you know, Bentonville was a little bit of challenge. They played kind of the bottom half of their conference. Daryl, what do you think about this? I think it's a very interesting matchup, and the Wampus Cats better be prepared. 
Well, this is one of those games, too, that could be in the 50s uh, either yeah. way you go because Conway's averaged about 54 points, and like I said, they've, they've shut it down at halftime. Mm. I mean, they've literally had to keep it from getting to 100 on people. Uh, so you got to think that, that Conway's a little bit more healthier probably than Pulaski Academy uh, just because of the depth stuff that we talked about early on in the year. Uh, Pulaski Academy has shown that they can score in bunches against anybody. Brandon Cobb is kind of – their leading rusher, he's over 2,500 yards total offense. He leads the state in passing with 27 touchdowns. Uh, Javion Walker's his big uh, his big target. Uh, defensively, uh, that's the thing about Pulaski Academy that people aren't they're they're defensively they can they can hang with you. Uh, had some trouble with Cabot, but came up with a big pick six to to turn that game completely around and pretty much end it. Uh, Pulaski Academy is at home. Conway's going to travel and they're going to travel well. Uh, Grayson Wilson. Uh, hopefully he'll be back for this game. He was 72 of 101 for 1,400 yards this year, 17 touchdowns. He's got all kinds of weapons. You want to talk about team speed. I mean, Conway yeah. has it. Uh, two big, huge tackles, too, offensively. Uh, and then, of course, you got Kelly over there calling plays for him. And Mark, is a, he's, a, he's a good one. Yeah. Uh, he's pretty phenomenal. So it's going to be wits ends on that. Here's the, here's the most important thing about this, Sam, is I think Conway's figured out how to stop people. Uh, I think it's taken them some time to figure it out, uh, especially in, with their back seven. Uh, and, of course, this is going to be a big, huge challenge for those guys. Can they get to the quarterback? Because, they, you know, Pulaski Academy is kind of unique because they'll hike that thing 10 yards back there. I mean, he's already in a, in a drop getting rid of the, uh, the football. So this will be interesting to see. I think Conway is going to be too much. Uh, so I'm going to take Conway to travel to Pulaski Academy and get the win. Well, Wampus Cats fans, you better get there early. Ain't many seats, or in, and there's no lawn chairs access. No, and they're not going to wait for you either. They're no, not going to wait for you to show up. No, they'll probably uh, have some roped off areas. Yes, yes. <laughs> Ma All right, Mouth, uh, you've been over to Conway. You've seen him practice a few times. You're close to Buck James here. He's been worried about this game all year long. Talk to us about this one. He's been worried about this game since August. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he was he was talking about this matchup when I went and watched them their their last scrimmage before their uh, benefit game with Malton. Um, Conway's playing really really well right now. PA has put together two great two really good performances against Bryant and Conway and uh, Bryant and Cabot, excuse me, in back to back weeks. Uh, but you know I've got to go with the Wampus Cats. Mouth's going with the Wampus Cats. Ty, you're pretty close to this one. You've seen PA um, and all that, you know, have their growth and that part getting at 7A. And obviously, you know, Coach Buck James, what he did at Bryant and what he's trying to do here at Conway. What's your thoughts on this one? A lot of great players. Well, I think oh. Coach, Coach Fimple made a great point. The thing about Pulaski Academy, not just under Coach Lucas, but Coach Kelly as well, is their defense always was – it's not necessarily as heralded, but they always had some really good defense. Yeah, they could score 50, 60 in any given game, but – uh, their defense a lot of times came to play one of the reasons they weren't certain tight games. So that's probably the reason why you guys are saying Coach James has been worried about this game since August. Now, you guys are going to help to help me. I was looking at – is Grayson's status up in the air for this game? Is it – is he TBT or what's yeah, – we don't really know. Man. We don't know yet. Okay. <laughs> Still early in a lot of injury yeah. reports. <laughs> okay. Well, I I'll say this. If Wilson plays, then he'll be enough for Conway to get a road victory – he's not able to play, I'll, I'll take Pulaski Academy. Um, I'm assuming he wants to play in this game. Uh, Pulaski Academy is not an easy place to play. They got that bell that rings after touchdowns. about the most annoying theme in Arkansas high school football because we heard it so much at Little Rock Christian because it was about 60-something <laughs> every year when we went down there. Uh, so I think Wilson wants to play again. Y'all are more familiar with his injury status, but I'll, I'll take Conway to tie one. Um, and Coach James getting it. And I love Coach Lucas, too, but I think it's going to be a, a heck of a football game. Well, I, I do, too. And, it, well, and you nailed something right there, Ty, is PA is just unique. I mean, they're unique. Yeah. Their offense is different. Than, and, and and people go, what do you mean by that? They 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 got different plays or styles different, and, and you got to really – understand it but or you can get in trouble real fast with those guys you know onside kick or two or uh you know fourth down conversions and those things happen now one thing about coach james knows pa he scrimmaged them all the time this team goes back to star city day so he understands it i think the game is going to be one up front 
uh, it's kind of like with the Bryant situation, I think. Uh, but it's going to be close, and it's going to be high scoring, but I'm going to go with Conway also. Well, guys, I tell you what, this is, this is such big games. Daryl, I want you a uh, real quick recap uh, on what you think is going to happen a little bit. we got our predictions out there and what you're looking forward to this week. Well, you, you look for, you know, the, the uniqueness of PA, but I think it, you also see that at Conway in their offensive philosophy. I mean, Coach Kelly, uh, Mark Kelly's a phenomenal OC there, so they're probably seeing that in practice. There's not a lot that's going to take course that they don't see, I think. Uh, and I think that their defense has actually figured out how to play uh, against that stuff too. And then here's the biggest thing that PA's got going for them. They've had to play – uh, so I think they're going to have some momentum here. The Conway hadn't played four quarters yet. So if nope. you can you get, get them into a four quarter game and see what happens, I think that's the most interesting thing about that game. Rivercrest Osceola, good God, speed galore. If you're a division two football coach, I don't know why you just oh. don't go offer both rosters and say, <laughs> Hey, I'm the, I'm the greatest coach of all time. I'm just going to take the whole rosters of both teams uh, because they are just skilled up. Uh, I mean, you got some of those guys that are division one course Prescott, uh, you know, we're going to see, you know, if you want to be the man, you must beat the man. Uh, we got a couple of those games this week. You know, you got Mansfield and Boonville and you got Prescott and uh, Bismarck. So, you know, we got a lot of games uh, that are going to play out to that one and two seed. Uh, and then you got teams that are kind of buying for, you know, the third, fourth spots, but you get opposite of the bracket. You know, a lot of these games we're going to see probably again. Yeah. Probably again, somewhere down the line. And I'm sure that's what Fayetteville's telling their kids right now. You know, we got to take care of business this week. So it's going to be an interesting week. Like I said, we're getting down to the, the playoff run right here. Then close mouth real quick. What's your, what, what game are you interested in? All of them. <laughs> yeah. There's not a bad one. There ain't a bad one. Because it's a, it's a fantastic week of football. It just goes to show you it all comes down to the final three weeks. For playoff uh, meetings, for 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 everything, um, the one I'm most looking forward to seeing, I'm gonna tell you, I think it's Rivercrest and Oce Oceola. Yeah, for me, I I could see that. I'm really interested in that Rogers Bentville matchup. I think think that's that's gonna be interesting. Well, Ty. Let me ask you this. Let's kind of change gears here. Uh, Hogs got beat uh, Saturday. What's your little, what's your outlook on Mississippi State and that situation? Talk to us a little bit about that. That's more than your your area a little bit. Guys, I, I saw Arkansas's favor by like eight and a half in that game, at least the opening line, which I was surprised by. I'm going to be honest. I left the press box after the third quarter. I grabbed two Michelob Ultras, and I just sat in the stairwell and was just depressed. Almost jumped off the stairs, to be honest. I, I can't believe – I mean, you guys – you guys, you guys have coached. I, I know things happen, but I, I'm just blown away after a bye week that they played as bad as they did offensively on Saturday night. But uh, Mississippi State, if, if you watch what they've done lately, I was actually – Texting a, a buddy who works in the athletics department. They've been scoring the football. Yes, yeah. Like it, it, their defense is the problem. They're 126 in scoring defense in college football. So Arkansas is going to have a chance to score some points, but Mississippi State's offense is, is looking pretty potent right now. They they hung with Texas A&M. They put up 31 on Georgia. This is not going to be an easy stretch for Arkansas uh, next Saturday or this Saturday, excuse me, in Starkville. Well, and he, well, you hit it, you know. We're talking about here hard places to play. Cowbell, uh, baby. Cowbell. Yeah, Cowbell. And, and nobody's jumping off the bus real excited about playing there, man. It's out in Melanie. Start Vegas. It's, Start it's, Vegas. Come tough, on, man. It's tough, man. It's it tough. was it, that that cowboy, guys. I, I went for the first time two years ago, and this was when Arkansas had Billy Hornsby having to play because KJ was hurt. It's just very unique. Um, and it, not that it's like the most hostile environment in the Southeastern Conference. But it's kind of like some of these venues that we've talked about in the high school ranks in Arkansas. It's just like sometimes you're not used to this type of environment, this little – this variance of whatever you're having to deal with. And Arkansas players are, are going to have to deal with it on Saturday. And if they – if the defense um, kind of takes an entire half to really pick it up a little bit, then I expect that Arkansas could walk away losing two straight, unfortunately, fellas. Yeah, that's it'll be a tough one. And may, oh. may I may I say something too before yes. Ty, you talk about how Mississippi State is scoring the ball is scoring touchdowns. They're scoring points now the last two weeks. Their offense has come alive. 
the Razorbacks, bless their hearts, we're not scoring points. Mm-hmm. We're not scoring points right now. If we give up 34, we're going to have a hard time winning the game. I, I agree, Mouth. I mean, you look at the LSU game. I know Andrew Armstrong caught that touchdown in the first half, uh, but they didn't do anything in the second half. There was that tip ball that it resulted in interception from Weeks. Jaquinta Jackson got hurt. Don't know his status. We'll maybe hear about it later in the week from Coach Pittman. They haven't run the ball with the same intensity level through the first five games as they had the last two. They beat Tennessee, uh, maybe despite of the offense at times. And then this last week, really, it's all it showcased itself against LSU. So, yeah, to your point, Matt, they got to pick it up offensively because I think the Bulldogs are going to find success uh, throwing and run the football at times against Travis Williams' defense. And I don't think that's going to take a step back. But I know he's ticked off after how his unit played on Saturday, even though they were put in some just awful situations from the Razorback offense. Terrible situation. If we would block inside out, too. I don't know who we can talk to about that. Can we block the inside guy closer to the quarterback? That would be the first thing that I would work on this week. Uh, yeah, it's amazing to me how the inside guys always – we're always flushed out of the pocket because we get just killed inside. Give me software. Coach Williams, where can you not be soft at? Can't be soft up the middle, boys. You can't be soft, you can't in the soft up the middle. You can't, if you're soft up the in this game, if you're soft up the middle, boys, you're you're in trouble, man. You gotta yeah, be you're done. Mean, you're done. I mean, that's just what it's it's been like that for a hundred years. It's gonna be like that later on. Well, Ty, man, I appreciate you coming on for coming on. We're going to send you a, a coach's in the mouth t shirt and a, a gift. Let's go. Card. A gift card from All American Steakhouse, hundred dollar gift card. Go over and get you a free steak and crab dip. Crab dip. Go with the crab dip over there. Really good. Well, we like I said, we appreciate you coming on. We're gonna give you some some stuff. Get you some All American Steakhouse. Get some food over there, guys. Check us out on YouTube. Hit the like and subscribe button. We're on X. We're on Instagram, and we want to also thank our sponsor, Lindsay and Associate, uh, All American Steakhouse in Springdale, the Pigs brand. Well, for Coach Chef Williams, Coach Daryl Fimple, the mouth print bender, and our guest pecker, Ty Richardson, we'll see you next time.